Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Slarshi here, and we're bringing uh, a quick uh, playoff prediction. Um, I didn't do any research on any of these teams. Um, I, I'm just going to be looking at all of them and uh, giving a quick rundown of my opinions of what's going to happen. Um, so we'll start off with the Pens in uh, Montreal series. Um, that is the 12 seed versus the 1 seed. So it is pretty, pretty tough for the Montreal to pull out a big dub here. Um, Sipful's going to have to absolutely carry the boys to a win. Um, I don't know the exact lines on anyone either, so don't get too angry if I mix up the lines. But if I was Montreal, since they're so out of it, I think you got to put Sipful on his own line with the uh, with two third line guys and then like over overstack the, the, the first and second lines to try to at least steal a win that they shouldn't have had to maybe make it to game seven, even though I think their game seven's worse than them. But Pittsburgh uh, has a lot of good players. Um, they're, they're a lot uh, more deep than Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's uh, got some chem, like better chem to it, I believe. Even though Montreal, they, they, they used to play together on Detroit and all that stuff. I think their their lower lines are uh, just just more more uh, they they play more is my opinion. Demi God is a like a great contract, um, and he's like not even their best player, like, and he's just putting up great great numbers. Um, get aced is I think, like I think he's on a third line or something. That could be no, it's eh. I don't really know their lines, but they got three good right wingers like. You, you have three great right wingers with over 17 wins. I don't know. They're just built really well. Um, defense is not the greatest in Montreal, in my opinion. I think they're not. They don't have as much depth either as the Pittsburgh does. Pittsburgh has um a very good top four. All right, so I'll go over um what I think. So they got 53, 52 uh, votes for the Penguins and 24 for Montreal. That's a decent amount for a 12 seed. I think Pittsburgh wins in uh, in five, is my opinion. All right, we'll go to the next series here. Um, what is it? Islanders and Buffalo. So Buffalo started the season, they were, like, a lot better than um, – than they are now, in my opinion. I don't know. I think they, they kind of just hit a wall and then just started uh, trying different things to try to improve. But I think the more you try, like, trades, you're just moving sideways. You're not moving up or down. And then sometimes it makes it harder for, like, to build cam with your line and stuff like that, doing all those trades. But so we'll look at the teams. We got Panda going against his previous previous boys and Cooch and uh, Josh, I think, was on the team still to try to try to beat them. He'll be he'll be trying to to make sure he I mean, he's not going to repeat and they took the cup, but a lot of these guys both played in the, the Stanley Cup finals against each other. Lem, Dowdy, and then Panda there, and then actually, I lied. I, I just, just won, I guess, um, from the opposite team. But uh yeah, I mean Isles Isles are, are a pretty good team here. Um Cooch Cooch is very, very good, underrated player. Boyley, I mean, probably the one of the best left wings in this LG. Um so if and if they're on, on different lines, like you're gonna have to stop one of them out of like four games and then the, the game seven, like gonna have, they're gonna have them both in there. So I don't think uh, Buffalo really has a a really a game seven type forward on the team, in my opinion. Um, I mean, pure talent did get top ten in the right wing in the the awards or the Flurry's uh team of the year season thing. So maybe maybe it is a game seven. But um, in my opinion, I think they the uh, Islanders winning. Eh. Who's their goalies? Who's Buffalo goalies? 
Husky's been struggling, but maybe he'll pick it up in the playoffs. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll say Isles in five, which is a little bit strict, but it's my opinion. And I'm just going through these. Not, nothing, like, too analytical. Um, There's just, like, just looking at it for, like, 20 minutes. Or not even 20 minutes. Like, like a minute, and then just making my – uh. Uh, my statement. So it's uh Toronto and Devils. This is gonna be a tough series for Dangs. Um, Toronto had, has had one of the best regular seasons in like, I think Dangs' career maybe. No, he's normally been a regular season team. I think. I don't know. I don't know. He's built some good teams, but I think this is the, definitely the best teams ever he's ever built. And um, what's the? Oh wow, thirty six for Toronto and. 40 for Devils. Wow, this is a, like almost 50-50 split. So you got the two-headed, two two line, two-headed horse with uh, having um, I think I forgot exactly who the two were pairing together, but um, I, I think I'll I'll pull up the um the predictions on uh, Ale because he made a great post on um LG about the first round. I didn't go into like game by game but so i'll just steal it from him um and give him a shout out for for posting it so we'll go to toronto first so toronto has barzy ripon and crusted together dangs lizzo omer tree stones skonksy Pashnak. okay so if this line goes against this line who wins i, I think that's pretty 50 50 yeah Who's the defense? Gong Show and Leet. There's Poland and Sandy. I think they have a better D pair, like, in my opinion. There, so. um, The game seven is going to be fucked. Wow. Defense isn't the greatest. I, I think. I think uh, New Toronto wins in, in what? How many? That's a. I don't know. I think they either win in six or lose in seven to the Devils. I'm going to go with Toronto wins in six, though. I just think um, the third line has very good chem. Um, They're underrated, to be honest. They haven't played as good as they should have, but they've been together for so long. I don't know about if he's ever played with them, like, outside of this, but I know they have really good chem, and if you put them with this line, these guys have been playing together for years as well on PlayStation side, so I don't know. They they just have really good chem, um, and I don't think they're gonna win a game in my opinion. No offense, it's just they weren't built to win. So, um, as a line, um, but in game seven, I think that's just, uh, too too good of a first line to not uh win a game. In my opinion, oh yeah, they had uh. Cameron, Gab, and Flurry Magic. So, th- this is a pretty good line here. I think they win two games. And then McFlurry wins one and loses one. And then the one one of the ones that that he loses is going to be the game six. And it'll either be against it'll be against the ripping line, in my opinion. That's that's my prediction right there. All right, let's go to the next one so we don't last too long here. Uh, Flyers in Tampa. So what's this? They got 43 for Flyers and 26 for Tampa. Yeah, that's probably pretty fair. Um, I don't really think Tampa is good enough. Um, my line played, I guess, their third line is what they said on on, on here, I, I don't know if it actually is their third line, and I didn't think they were that great. And CT's a great player, but I don't think he's – I don't think it's uh, a good enough line to to keep those two people together, in my opinion, for a third line. I think they should have stacked their first or second line a little bit harder to win more games, but maybe CT can pull out a miracle and, and carry them to a win. Um Sexton's a great goalie, though. That's for sure. He can steal some games. Um, and then the um, Flyers here—they—they—they—they've been built pretty pretty well. 
a lot better than anyone expected. Um, every line has that guy that can, can carry, uh, in my opinion. Le Levesky can carry. I mean, the second line has Augie to carry, and fourth line has, has, has been – has been winning a lot in uh the last like ten years of LG. He knows how to do. He knows how to win. Um, but winning June, Jay Fox and and June all have great chem. Ibriark it has um the experience of being able to carry offense as a D man. So they just got a lot of of good stuff going for them. Um, Fraser has been has been grinding. He puts in those hours so. He, he's gonna be even. He's gonna be really good with the uh, Levesky and and those guys. And Toto has been been scoring. So, I think I think it it's an underrated team to be honest. I I don't think many people expected them to be in this um like doing doing this well so far. So, it's a, it's already a a great great place that they're in. Who the, what is it? Tampa. Oh shit! They should be on the bottom. Who are they on to Connecticut again? First, first and second. I think um, so. Shocks focus Taze, Ziz, Hubert, Rocket. So Ziz and Rocket won their cup together. So that's an underrated second line too. They got really good chem. And they got Army and Fromms. Or Fromms plays with them too as threes. And I don't, I don't know if he was on that cup team. He might have been, but they they've been played together for a while too recently. Um, they're gonna always get that QC server vetoed. <laughs> Be on that East server. Uh, Shocks focus and Taze is a pretty good line. Yeah, Perf's been tearing it up on that line. Twenty plus wins. Um, I think Flyers in six, in my opinion. Okay, next Blackhawks and L.A. So it's eighth versus the one. No one thought the the Blackhawks were gonna get in. That's for sure. Like everyone was like. Like Calgary was gonna get in, Calgary was gonna get in, and then they they blew it at the end, I think, and um, Chicago ended up getting in by like a point or something. I, I don't know the exact thing. I don't feel like looking, but they are they are very sixty to nine. That's crazy. All right, let's look at the the, the two teams. Was it LA again? I forgot. Um, LA. Oh, yeah, it is. Right. Yeah. All right. So another team that's uh. Kind of under the radar in some people's eyes. Um, they they got a they got a lot of talent on this team as well. Um, McCutch coming off a um a finals appearance um in a cup before, so he's he's been been uh deep in the playoffs, so he knows how to win those those tight games that are needed. Um, Gross Tabernacle coming out of nowhere from the hot scene, having a great season. Um, Stasny uh, is a great center. Goes back to it, ninety-five points at center, and and he's a two-way center, not just a not just an offensive center. He barely gets any giveaways and has a lot of takeaways. He had a great season. He he could be up for the uh, Selkie. I don't know the other options, but I mean, I guess it's tough because he did have ten losses. But I assume he played top top teams. Um, and having those numbers is pretty good stats. Sucks in the face to face us though too. It might might hurt a Selkie. I I don't know the other options, but he definitely should get like a nomination for it. Like, I, that's impressive in my opinion. But Chicago, like I don't know, dude. They, <laughs> in my opinion, like they don't even have a first liner. Um, that I'm seeing. Um, I mean, ninety eight used to be a first liner. He said he's not liking the game right now. I don't know if I mean AK is really good, but he's not gonna score goals like. So yeah, he's got five goals, thirty-one assists. So he's just he can only do so much. Um, but yeah, it, it might be LA and four, unfortunately for Chicago, unless something crazy happens. Um, Winnipeg Sharks. We'll go to that now. All right, let's look at these guys. So this is going to be a very good matchup. Um, I'll be watching a lot of these games. Um, what what is uh, the voting on? 
So it is Sharks got 49 votes to 19 on the Jets. That's fair. Um, Sharks got the home advantage too. So they'll be able to line match, as Jakku normally does very well. Um, just looking at the rosters. Okay, so... Um, looks like Pavsy has been playing really well for them. That's good to see. I don't know that, that Govo guy. I mean, I, I see he's been grinding recently. I haven't really ran into him. He's having a good season, too. Um, Harlan, my guy, is tearing it up for for a third liner. He's having a great season. He's going to be a great re-sign if, if I assume Jack re-signs him. Uh, GLP, having a great season. Odie. Was, they got a lot of a lot of guys that are like top top end players. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna be a great game seven if it gets to it. Um, like Jakku, like Odie, Mark, um, Gren, uh, Promo, and Josh. Like all those guys are top top end game seven guys. So it's uh, it's it would be a great game seven uh, game if it went to it. In my opinion, I don't know if it would. It looks like I don't know. I, I don't. I don't see a lot out of the the, the bottom the bottom line for um, Winnipeg. Um, Harlan is very good for a third liner, and and I think he's better than a third line. Obviously, is what I mean. It's just like having him on a third. And Trubes is very good too. He's super skillful. I think Sharks win in six, in my opinion, due to the lack of depth for Winnipeg. Um, Grant and Promo are going to have to have to win th uh, two games if they uh, if they want to uh, even have a chance for Game Seven. Um, obviously, I don't know. Would you would you separate Grant and Promo for one game to try to get another win if they went to the third line? I think. I think you're going to have to because if they both win the game, I, I don't know if these two are with them every time or if they're separated. It looks like they play together, but I could be wrong just off this. Uh, they're, uh, never mind. They're, this, the lineups aren't up or whatever. I, I can check actually real quick. I'll check real quick, but I won't do it for everyone because it'll just take too long. Um. We'll go this game and this game because it's two different weeks. Okay, so this time it was Josh playing with the third line. We dream, in my opinion. I think that's his third. Yes, it's third line. And um, Josh playing with the third line again. So, okay, that's smart, though, Loki. If they have Josh um, on the third line to try to get them a win, um, that that is a very good uh, idea. But I don't know if Josh is going to be good enough to beat the Sharks third line. Josh is really good offensively, but I think um, what? Okay, well, I think uh, the the Sharks line is too good for that, so I think they're going to have to either put Promo or Gren on the third line to win a game to to force Game Seven if they want to uh, beat the Sharks. So I I say Sharks in six. All right, so the uh the the Seattle Kraken and the Dallas Stars. So Seattle has the biggest uh road ahead of them. Um, no one thought they were going to be in the playoffs. Worldwide talks all all of it, and I respect it, Loki. He he um told told everyone that he was gonna he was gonna get uh make make playoffs and win the cup, and he did. So respect to him. Going from an AHL manager um last season. To not even being able to, um, or, or to not make the playoffs in the AHL as a manager, but making the playoffs in the NHL as a free contract manager, like, it's really impressive. So, um, he's very polarizing. So most people aren't gonna give him the props he, that he deserves for that, but uh, I respect it. Um, but we'll go look at the Seattle Kraken. I um was on that team for a bit. I didn't play it really. I didn't play a game. I don't think for them. Uh, but what I noticed is um, they enjoyed uh, they enjoyed playing with each other, like the lines. Like they got a lot of chemistry lines that won't get frustrated in a tough loss, which may lead them to take out 
Dallas, like it's not going to happen. But like if it does happen, it would be because because of if Seattle lost the game, Seattle like is going to go back into the game next game not frustrated. In Dallas, if they lose to Seattle, they could get very very like down and like onto onto together ugh, onto each other because they're angry that they lost to these guys, which is is a possibility, but it's not likely. So. Let's get into it. So we got Buckle going out with 26 wins and zero regulation losses, and only one lo- uh, overtime loss, which is not very un- – it's very unheard of of doing that. But uh, Dallas, they, they, they are built they are built to win. Um, you got Lucas, man in the defense uh, on one line. You got Ethan C on another line. Like already, even if you had like second – to third liners with those guys on that line, they're winning games. So um, it's going to be very tough to beat them. If the only way, ha- like if something happens where like they both lose one game, um, then they'd, they'd still be fine <laughs> because they, they got a, a lot of talent on the, the third line. Even um, having Hanyak, he's having, he had a rough rugby season, but he had a lot of tough matchups. Um, Hanyuk is a very good hot player. He's got thumbs. Um, Party Poopa, people are hating him, but he grinds. Uh, I think he'll be a lot better than he was in the regular season. I don't really know what happened during the regular season either, but a lot of people hate him. Um, I think he's a great player. Um, he just hasn't played in a while, so I think by the time playoff starts, he, he would have put a lot of hours in to try to, uh, to get, get, his, get his cup. Um, so for those two on a third line, I, I think that's really good. Um, but uh, Seattle, they got Kessel and Wardsy, who are very good friends and wanted to play together all year. And I think that Brown's there too. Um, and that's like, I think it's Kessel's like really good friend. Um, so that's, that's, that's a solid line. And um, the first line on uh, Seattle, they're not first liners in my opinion, but they got a lot of chemistry with uh, Skyer and uh, – Who's with him? I think it's Super Saiyan. And then Rowski, I think. Um, which is a pretty good line. And then uh OG Eden and and uh somebody else, I don't know. But like they they they've been playing together for years, most of them, like in the AHL and stuff like that, and they grind club together. So, um it's a better team than people look at, but it's tough when you don't have any game seven players, in my opinion. Um you can't really beat like esports top players like Buckle, Booch, Zach, and Ethan C and Andre and even D three's a good esports player. Um serves, I mean, he hasn't been he hasn't played esports, but like he could be on a top team. Like and I don't think Wash uh Seattle has any of those players. So they're gonna really have to play the chemistry type hockey to win games. You, they're gonna have to buy into the trap hard. They're gonna have to buy into the two one wins of just possessing the puck if they want to win. Uh, I'm going to give Seattle just one win um, out of it, which is more than most people would say. I think they, I think Dallas wins in five. But uh, congrats to, to Worldwide for making the playoffs. Uh, Vegas and Arizona. This is going to be a great series as well. Um, Lou, Lou builds a Lou team. Rocket builds a Rocket team. Uh, they usually have pretty similar teams. Rocket likes to get a lot of the French guys um, that have great thumbs. Not the greatest defensively, in my opinion. They have they're usually more offensive players. Lou likes players that can play both sides of the ice. Two hundred foot hockey games with great chem grinders. Um, so I think it's kind of like more skill versus chem like type of type of series. Um, in my opinion, uh, I think Rocket can can and Desi if they're on a line they they're getting two wins every single time. And they lost the last game seven that they're with, um, I, I think last season together. Um, I think they're on the same team, but but I think that it was a fluke, you know. <laughs> I think if they get to game seven, uh, I think Vegas wins. Um, and then uh, Air, uh, Arizona has a lot of great, um, great, great chemistry players. Not chemistry, but two hundred foot players, like I was saying. Um, X-Dub is having a rough season, but he's a really good player. Um, 
I don't know if if he's liking the line he's on because he doesn't really play the same style as those guys. So if people get him the puck and people get open, like he can hit them. Um, I would even put Dubs with um Soilos as and Dubs as a left wing in my opinion. Um, Dubs would be able to get Soilos the puck, um, or score from Soilos's pass because he's a pass first type of guy nowadays. Um. Tarasenko is a great D-man. Um, I, I loved his breakout passes. For him being on West, he breaks it better out better than people on, like, no ping. Like, it's crazy. He knows how to time it at the line where you get great entries. Uh, Dops is a generational D-man. Like, he is very, very good. Um, I haven't seen him recently. I, I've seen him in the uh, CBJ a bit, but um, I don't know how much he's been playing recently. But when he was at his top, he was a very good D-man. Um but like Vegas has a bunch of them. Uh, I haven't seen Bishop play before, but uh, having uh, Deeks, Desi, and Casey Nine in their top four, uh, uh, that's a very good defensive core. Uh, Arizona has Duffs and Lou and Tom and Sasha, man, which is pretty pretty good. But in my opinion, I think Vegas defense is better. Um, I think Vegas wins in six. And if they don't win in six, they win in seven. So I'll say Vegas in six. Um, this was a quick uh, run through of all the teams. Um, sorry if I missed saying anything about your certain team or if I got some info wrong. Um, I didn't go too analytical, analytical or look at any uh, stats too p- before I didn't research. Just looked at it just now and uh, just said what I thought. But uh I will do another one for round two and maybe do a little bit more research, maybe not. Um, But uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, make sure you subscribe and like for more um, and wait for round two and uh, good luck at playoffs, boys. Peace.